Turning to our top story this hour, North Korea has fired two short-range ballistic missiles into the sea. It was Pyongyang's second launch in less than a week. This as China's foreign minister visited Seoul. In response, South Korea too successfully test-fired a submarine-launched ballistic missile. The missile was fired underwater from the newly commissioned submarine An Chang Ho and flew the plan's distance before hitting its target. The North's launch came as Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi was in Seoul for talks with his South Korean counterpart. The Chinese Foreign Ministry called on, quote, relevant sides to keep their restraints and actively engage in dialogue and contact. Listen in. Analysts say North Korea's weapons technology has seen a marked advance. Its recent missiles are better able to avoid defense systems and capable of delivering warheads across the South or Japan, both of them U.S. allies. Japan's Prime Minister Yoshihisa Suga also condemned North Korea's missile test, calling it absolutely outrageous. North Korea is under international sanctions for its nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs, which it says it needs to defend itself against a U.S. invasion. The North's weapons programs have made rapid progress under Kim, but the country has not carried out a nuclear test or an intercontinental ballistic missile launch since 2017. The short-range ballistic missiles fired during today's launch flew about 800 kilometers at a maximum altitude of around 60 kilometers, according to media reports from the South. Last week, Pyongyang held a scaled-down parade, and today's launches come days after images of the North's new long-range cruise missile, dubbed a strategic weapon of great significance, were released. The pictures were first seen in the Rodong Sinmun newspaper, showing a missile exiting one of five tubes on a launch vehicle in a ball of flame and a missile in horizontal flight. The missiles fired at the weekend traveled 1,500 kilometers, about 930 miles, on two-hour flight paths, including figure of eight patterns above North Korea and its territorial waters to hit their targets, according to KCNA. Our correspondent Phoebe Amoroso is joining us live from Tokyo for more on this story. Phoebe, how is South Korea looking at this latest provocation from its neighbor, North Korea? And also the timing of the missile launch at it comes when Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi is visiting Seoul. Absolutely, the timing is definitely very significant as uh, the Chinese foreign minister is visiting. Some are interpreting this launch as a message to Beijing as to not to think, forget about Pyongyang. And then there is, of course, uh, the self uh, testing of a submarine launch ballistic missile. Uh, this, the South says, gives it um, adequate deterrent technology and defense against the North. But that said, there is still a sense of um, anxiety and also frustration that talks really aren't advancing. Hotlines between North Korea and South Korea had reopened in July, and then South Korea held military drills with the US, and that contact 
was then cut off. So dialogue really hasn't been advancing. The South has uh, approached the U.S. Um, previously, it's been reported that they've asked the U.S. to advance one-to-one -one talks, feeling that uh, that would be more successful based on the three summits that were held up to 2019. Uh, that doesn't seem to be advancing currently. There are also reports that uh, the South has turned to China for help in advancing these talks. But uh, on that front, China, as uh, you reported, has just said for all parties to exercise uh, relevant restraint. Now, how would the avenue for dialogue be reopened? Now, some analysts are saying that humanitarian assistance would be the way forward. Currently, North Korea is suffering from food shortages. It is uh, extremely concerned about COVID-19. It does not have an adequate medical system to deal with an outbreak. So um, if it was to receive humanitarian assistance, and this would be allowed under the United Nations sanctions, that could be a door to open dialogue and perhaps improve relations uh, going forwards. And how is Japan reacting to this ballistic missile launch as it comes at a time when US allies are meeting in Tokyo to discuss Pyongyang's nuclear ambitions? Yes, well, we've seen quite a strong reaction from Japan today, uh, quite a different reaction from uh, Monday. So on Monday, North Korea launched a cruise missile, and this is technically still uh, allowed under the United Nations Security Council rules. However, with the launch of a ballistic missile, this represents a much more serious threat. We've heard some very strong language from Prime Minister Suga. He described the incident as outrageous, and it was a, that it's a security threat to the entire region. Now, Japan uh, has had um, several um, scares from North Korea with missiles launched into its waters, into its economic um, exclusive, exclusive economic zone. And there have been several uh, co confrontations, even among fishing vessels. A North Korea fishing vessel collided with a Japanese vessel back in 2019, and 60 North um, members of the crew from North Korea had to be rescued. So there is a sense of uh, territorial anxiety on that front. Japan does seem to be following the US when it comes to its approach to North Korea. And one analyst I spoke to said the problem is that the Biden administration has not been very clear on its exact approach. It said that um, even after the missile launch on Monday, that it's still open for dialogue, but it's not made any indication that it wants to ease sanctions. Now, coming up on the agenda, there is the Quad meeting um, next week, September the 24th, and uh, the four countries involved are, were scheduled to be talking about the COVID vaccines as they promised in March. Also China, a big security concern given its mil growing military presence in the South and East China seas. Of course, Afghanistan is also on the agenda. But now with these missile launches uh, from North Korea, we're likely to see that being higher up on the agenda. And it will be interesting to see exactly uh, how these four um, allies just progress and bring that discussion going forwards. Thank you, Phoebe Amoroso, for joining us and for your insights there.